I've got a topic to cover today which has to do with this light. Spotlight, we call it often, and it can do that job, but its bigger job is much, much bigger. Spotlight itself used to illuminate a portion of a background or some other area. But the real title for this particular tool should be background luminance. And that's what I'm going to show you today is how I use it, not for the sake of a spot, but rather to balance out the elements in a scene to reduce contrast in different areas or gain contrast in different areas. It's really quite deep and quite complex. So let's take a look. My light or grid spot, better than spotlight, is made with a honeycomb grid on top of or in front of the light source. The diffuse light source, if you want to, there's all kinds of devices you can use to get the look. I found that the medium one that fits my photogenic is really the size that I stick with all the time. Most manufacturers have grid sets that fit them perfectly. So mine is also suspended from the ceiling and that makes it easy for me to position wherever it need be. That should, however, not limit you. You can put your grid spot on a stand off to the side and it will work just great. But right now we're gonna look at what it really does. On this first portrait, you see that the light, the luminant background is behind the subject on the shadow side or the subject's shadow side. It's never a rule to be left, right, top, bottom. It just isn't. It is positioned where it needs to be. In this case, we are lit from the right in kind of a nice little profile. This is kind of a Madame X by Sargent kind of a feel. But what matters is that there's extra illumination behind the shadow side, which really separates the body and the hair. And therefore, on the opposing side, you have the darker background against the highlight flesh. That's what brings balance. That's what gives us all the necessary edges. Nothing falls off into darkness. A recent favorite, a fine art image made on a large film, 8x10 film. First, of course, tested with smaller, but then we, we did it. And uh, it has double spotlight feel on it just because you didn't want to have just this light down here without some counterbalance. Uh, this is the normal relief to shadow side, but in this case, we wanted the entire background, floor, everywhere, to be a variant, but still of one kind of tone, so that the subject, the old man with his drum, stands out so beautifully. So this is not accomplished with one light or two lights. This is accomplished with background control, and I hope you can see that there. This one was called... Uh, flowers in her hair, and the subtlety of this one is what I want to point out. Even though the shadow side subject is the right, the background on the right is lighter, but not by very much at all. Just a tiny little kiss of extra luminance so that it would balance the difference here, the dark to light to dark to light. This is the important part right here, and that's where the spot was put to basically give uh, a control and a rhythm that you can't get without it. All right, I put the hot background next to the hotter dress area so that we really do study this area first. We've taken the elements of the chair, put them very much next to the other dark so that they don't stand out that much. In this bridal portrait, which of course was originally created in color, uh, digital, um, when I made my black and white, I felt it rendered really well because of the, the multi-tones of the background that are all kind of throughout the image, very, very soft, magical feel. And I feel like the balancing of the background tones totally work to take us where we want to get to view. And she already had a win right here in the face because we have her highlight, mask of the face, surrounded by darker. It was already a win. This background has 
this is really cool because the background, I positioned him so the darkest area of the background was against his highlight flesh. Then, just like in the bare arm situation, if you don't want to see as much of that attention-wise, put something lighter next to it. So we, we, we lit this area so it would soften that. And then we have the extra light up here to separate his face and shoulder arm here from the subject. Again, if you can imagine, one big soft box coming from our right and any background, it's going to be darker here and you won't get a good sense of separation. This is kind of an everyday use of the system, if you will, of lighting over the shadow shoulder. It's probably the most common use I have for this and that is we are lit from the right, beautiful modeling on his face, but we put the spotlight back here to further separate and give dimension to the image. If it was just a flat background, you wouldn't have that. That's what can make these things so painterly and so full dimension. So I hope you enjoyed or at least got uh, some really good information out of this segment on uh, my grid spot use spotlight, background luminance. The importance of it is it's just another tool. It's like painting with light. You're just deciding that a certain area needs to be lighter for a certain reason. And you now know mine is to give dimension, to create contrast or low contrast areas to keep the eye away from an area. And uh, you could study this over and over and practice it for a very long time but it is an essential ingredient to making portraits of uh, like a world-class artwork where you are in charge and you just don't have to let a background be what it is. You can modify it uh, while you're shooting, not just later in Photoshop. So thank you for being with us. Please subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you again here on Master Photo Techniques.